Well, hello and welcome to Friday the 13th. <laughs> this is Little Workroom Crafts and I'm Davina. This actually is the very first, hopefully in a row, of um, tutorials on this channel. There is going to be a playlist for them all. I have got a lot, a lot of requests, which I, oh, thank you so much for that. And they all will be um, followed over the year, I'm hoping. I hope it all will be done and everything. So, come on in and let's start with English paper piecing. So here we are, sat down at my workbench in the little workroom. Okay, I did forget to say, obviously, Friday the, Friday the 13th, uh, 2023, January. <laughs> that was all roundabout around the wrong way, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, oh dear. Anyway, right. Uh, what I'm going to do is just let everybody know this is how I do my paper English paper piecing. We are going to do squares today, but basically it's the same process for all different shapes, okay? Um, obviously, I'm doing these squares because I know I'd like to um, actually add these panels, uh, blocks, into, a, uh, into the quilt that I've already started making. Okay, then, first of all, I'm going to say I do not... I am one of those naughty girls that do I do not pre-wash my fabrics. I know there is a lot of quilters out there that do, but I personally don't. And then when my quilt is first washed, they all move at the same time. And I just love working on fresh fabrics. Now, oh, just quickly before I go over to the iron. So because I haven't pre-washed, I dry iron. Okay, I don't put no steam, nothing on my fabrics. Otherwise, it will work. It will destroy it, and it will work it in in different ways. And the um, and then the block won't be, you know, symmetrical. And let's face it, we need symmetrical in a, um, uh, in a quilt. Okay, then. Um, but if you have pre-washed you can use steam because obviously the shrinkage part of it or if there is any because these days there's not much of it to be honest uh it's only slight there is uh, as already been taken out of it um with the pre-wash so that then you can use steam i like to use 100 percent cotton um uh, that is one thing i am a bit fussy about but that is the only thing i'm fussy about okay so this is the pile of um fabrics that i have ironed and in if anyone's been following me with my quilt in the past it is a scrappy quilt it's all out of my scrap box english paper piecing is absolutely amazing if your fabric shops or local shop uh, craft store um sell scrap bags because you really only need small pieces depending on the shape you want to make now Right then, so let's get started. Now, because I am going to be doing two inch squares, I am going to be cutting my fabrics. I'm going to be cheating a bit, actually, <laughs> with two and a half inch rotary cutter. And I've got a little swivel rotary um, uh, cutting mat and obviously uh, my ruler and so on. If you're going to be doing it without all the big tools, which is absolutely fine just get a normal pencil find um make a template of something uh like this basically not in in the plastic to be honest um but you know what i mean anything square that's two and a half inches because you have to add on a two a quarter inch seam all the way around then Get a piece of fabric, get a 
go in your partner's or whatever's um, shed or if anything like that, find a piece of sandpaper, okay? That is absolutely brilliant for this job. So you put it face down, put your template on, and then look, when you draw, your fabric won't move. Now I'm going to do three sides, okay? Take that away. Now see how that moves. Right then, I'm back. I finally sorted it. Every two minutes, the camera was cutting out. That's because I needed to empty some things. That's all. Oh, well, we get there in the end. Yeah, so the sandpaper behind the fabric actually stops. When you're drawing, it stops the slipping, you see. Um, see, look at that. And then pop that underneath and look at that. You know what I mean? It's just a little tip that I've picked up over the years. Right, but as I said, and you can do that with your hexacons or anything, but just add on your quarter of an inch all the way round your paper. Now, if you don't want to go out and buy the templates, you don't have to. Just pop your paper on there and then draw around the paper. And then with a small ruler, just add a quarter of an inch or, or you can even eyeball it. Do you know what I mean? You can eyeball it. I can't, and I'll explain why in a moment. Okay, right, so let's cut out a square, just quickly. Always use the rotary cutter if you are going for that option, away from yourself. This is a sharp tool, just remember that. Right. So there's one. Yep, you can see, cool. Right, okay. That's that. And I think little Elmy, yep, he has moved off my chair. So now I can sit down and do the sewing part. So I go across there like so. Go across there like so. Okay, right. Let's get these two. Move that away. And as I say, let's get this here and Right then, okay, so are you actually over? Let's move you a bit here. Oh, that's better. Now I know I've got this tool, this thing that Glenn found on my camera. <laughs> wow. Now, I use the little PK pins, but as I say, you know what I mean? If you're just starting out, you know, you don't have to go and buy all the posh stuff. You really don't. Just use a normal, couple of normal short pins, I would advise. Try and get that central. I knew this was going to happen and we're going to have help now. It's the first time I've ever done a tutorial with a little lad here, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Righty ho. That's it. Right. That. Like that. We'll do that one in a moment. For your, um, where are we? That's on this page. Yep, there you are. For the, um, you know, the tacking on, and I will show you one with the glue, because it is quicker, I will say. Okay. Okay, right then. So, just use any old needle, to be honest. Because you're only tacking. <laughs> uh, there we are. Scissors. Now I just tie a tiny little knot in the bottom, fold over, let me see if I can get you closer, hang on, um, right that's a bit better isn't it, so fold over 
the fabric and I have the knot at the front because I just find it easier when you're unpicking to take the papers out and then fold over the squares and you would do this yet again with the um, hexagons you just go over and over and over like this like so right there we are fold over that way pop that in I'm just so looking forward to getting this quilt um, this block these blocks done and I have actually ironed a load of fabric I know and I'm going to see if I've got that see if I can um, so it's going to be the same blocks uh, the blocks excuse me the blocks are going to have the same fabrics just in just arranged in a different way basically so as I say because this is a complete scrappy quilt so if you notice you see that that goes that way then it goes that way then it goes that way then it goes that way okay that is just the way I do it then I always try and catch the corners then I go up down and then up I don't knot it or nothing in any way or form because you're only going to tack it you only want it there temporarily so that basically is my first one done oops sorry there you go right okay so let's just show you with the glue shall we oh, as I say this is not my favorite option but he who because there is people out there that might like it you never know <laughs> Okay then, right, so what you normally do is you've got your glue pen. Now, as I say, I would advise to put, use a proper glue pen for English paper piecing, okay? I really, really would. I say, I don't even know if I've got any glue in here. Oh, I have got a piece. Oh, and that is a teeny bit. You can get, obviously, I've got blue. Uh, what colour? These ones in here are actual yellow. And I think you can get a pink, as I say, and they are by Soline. Right, so normally people will put a dot in the middle to hold the paper in like so. And then you don't go right up against heat, against the line because obviously you've got to stitch that. So, and then you fold it over, turn it, put a bit on that bit of fabric there so you've got your corner down oh, Elmy, darling people can't see you good boy you can smell the glue <laughs> not very good but there you go right fold that over like so so i do apologize about elmo's help here leave it elmo look look the lovely people are trying to see me do a tutorial i know they're used to you but sometimes <laughs> Right, put that like that. So last edge over like so. And so on. There you go, you see? It is quicker. I know it's quicker, but I do like to tack. Okay, so it's options. It really, really is options. Okay, then right now, to sew these two together, now this is what I'm going to show you because I'm when you're dragging the um, uh, thread across the tops of your papers, it is more than like, it frays it. So it's more than likely to break if it's a cotton. Okay, polyester um, is a little bit stronger, I will say. So polyester is a good one to use. But all you need is fawn, okay? Yeah, fawn in colours, okay? So you've got, I've got here... Light, medium, dark, and a cream, okay? Cream is for really like, you know, tone on tones. If you're going to put a load of hexagons together that are tone on tone, that will absolutely go fine. Otherwise, use light, medium, and dark, okay? These will blend with anything when it comes to your fabrics, 
promise me it does i have bought whole quilts together with these with three colors okay and it just works i actually get my threads like i get my papers from uh, the lovely nancy which is a uh, lena patchwork here in the uk and i get my threads my orophil from her as well this is a made in Itali it italian <laughs> Italy this thread and it's absolutely brilliant okay so that's the threads the papers I've happened to pick a dark and a light fabric I just picked off the top of me uh, off the pop top of me um, fabrics okay now let's explain obviously that is going to be all right for that one but too light for that one so I am thinking it's going to be it's not going to be that not going to be the dark and I'll show you why because the dark is literally, you can see it on both, okay? So it's going to be either one of these two. So what I do is I get the two out together, lay them down, and I'll see if I can... Ah, right, yes, I can see which one it is right away. Okay, let's... I don't know if I can... Let's see you can zoom. No. Okay, I might have to see if I can zoom while I'm actually editing. But now the one that is actually standing out to me is that I can actually get away with using is the lighter out of the two out of these two. Oops, damn. OK. And I will zoom up uh, the best I can uh, while I'm editing. OK, like that. So you need a piece of this. Thread. Right. I'm today I'm going to use my black gold. by clover okay there we are just because there was one in me um <laughs> in my little needle case oh dear if anybody wants to know where this little needle case pattern comes from it's the lovely emma from vintage oh my goodness me do you know what? i had this trouble the other day didn't i vintage sewing she's english paper piecing oh her work is amazing uh also the little pin cushion is from Emma as well. I will actually write her details on the screen. If you go over to her, uh, her YouTube channel is amazing actually, as well as her website and everything. And uh, you can actually download this uh, little pattern for free. And it really, really is a lovely little pattern. And it's great because it's small little hexagons and it is actually a good little one to start off with. Okay then, right. Let's put a little knot in there. You get your papers. You go right side together. Now, this is why I like to do the tacking. OK, you can still do it with the glue, but I like to hide my knots. So I always go underneath there and hide my knot in the seam. OK, then you actually go see if I can get how far I close I can get to for you just above the paper can you see that yeah just above the paper and basically it's a little over stitch you go about a quarter of an inch no about an eighth of an inch apart you don't want to overdo it you don't want to pull your thread too tight because that will distort your fabrics and then just do a little over. So it's so therapeutic. Thera therapeutic. <laughs> it really, really is. And you'll be surprised how quick it all comes together. And I've just... Right. Okay. Yeah. How therapeutic it really, really is. Okay. Um, oh, I just love it. I really do love it. I know I do. I love my cross stitch, but you can actually, um, I'll have a look in a minute. I've got one down. I've got it down um, on the floor next to me and I will actually, it's where I've put the cross stitch and English paper piecing together. But go above the papers. You don't go through the papers. Okay. Okay, let's do that. As you can see, I have help. Darling, come on, good boy. You've done really well this morning. <laughs> Everybody will see how well you've done. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. <laughs> Righty-ho. So, 
let's get to the end of this and then I'll open it up and show you exactly what it looks like and as you can see look you can't see that thread it was the medium yep the medium fawn that I chose and that's that is blended in with the two and I'll show you at the front so you know what I mean you don't have to go out and buy all the different color threads you really really don't just get the uh, light medium dark uh, in the fawns and a cream and I tell you what I've done quilts doing this and I just absolutely love it I really really do now to finish off let me get that in there because I missed that piece. Ooh, and that bit, there we go. Um, you can just go over a couple of times. And then I would go over. Let's get that in there. Like that. Okay, now let's open that up. There you go. See? Oh, let me get these little things on there. You can't see the stitching at all. You really can't. And this is a brilliant way because you do actually get all your, um, you know, all your points and your, um, your angles and everything when you're doing your paper piecing. They all go together. As long as you've wrapped the fabric around enough, don't pull it too tight. Please don't pull it too tight uh, because it will bend the papers and that's what you don't want. But when you are actually like putting hexagons together, when the, you have a straight and then an angle, you will have to twist that like that, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. That is what has to be done. But squares are brilliant to start with. They really are. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you can still do it. You know, it can be done. Now, I personally use because eventually after you've been doing this a while your old fingers will actually stiffen up a bit now i went out and got these little uh thimbles because that's the knit uh, i know it's a bit weird but that is actually the um the hat the finger that i push my needle through normally it's that one <laughs> but i was taught with that one and these are good they are good but i find they slip off so I went out and brought these. They're called thimblets. Okay, they're reusable, as you can see. I have one there in use, which is really quite grotty. <laughs> and you plonk that on the side of whatever finger you use where the needle goes, and it's little pieces of leather, basically. And you don't have to have the like the metal thing thimble. I have used those in the past. I've tried every thimble you can think of, but I do like this um, thimblet for the me English paper piecing because it's you know it's just easier to do I say look it's it's stuck on there and then you just reuse it keep your little bit of paper and just reuse them they are very good just in case anybody do wonder about thimbles and stuff right Is there anything else I can think of? I don't think so. Right, let's turn you around anyway. Oops. Right then, okay. I will look back on this and pray that it has... <laughs> you can see what I've been doing. 
and um, I do ex say apologise for Elmo, but as you know, he is my little um, a bit of Velcro wherever he, mum, his mum is, he is. <laughs> so, and I knew he wouldn't leave me alone this morning, but hey oh, I try. So I'm hoping to get this block done by next Friday, so I can actually show you why um, I have decided to cut this this one at ex precisely uh, by rotary cutter okay because normally what you, you to be honest with you what you do is that you would pin your shape onto your fabric and then cut round and uh, then do your folding and then put your two shapes together as long as they're right sides together and then over sew above the papers I have tried to explain as much as I can that you don't need to go out and spend a fortune. If you have a sewing box with needles and threads in them, use them. Do you know what I mean? Use them. Don't go out and buy when you this unnecessary. But I will say, the one thing I will say that you, you really do need to get um, right, if you've got one of those cutting machines, if you're a paper crafter, then, you know what I mean, you're laughing, really, but um, is these. You do need the shapes right because if your shapes are out everything else will be out you know what i mean and it's just not uh then it won't look right at all and as i say nancy's her papers are very good you know they are really really good and what will happen is as i say i'm hoping to get this block um the block part the english paper part part pen the english paper piece in part finished <laughs> so i can um explain exactly what i'm going to do but uh, let me think what else was there. Is there anything else I can think of to say? What I might do, actually, let's... Uh, right, hold on. Okay, this is going to be an, a, um, a third square. The advantage of having like fabrics like this is like some of these can go in uh, this way, vertical or horizontal. So you're actually going to get two lots of different looking blocks from one piece of fabric now let's quickly do this now what i will be doing where's my little piece of sandpaper gone oh there you are so what i will be doing is i'm putting my square on there put my quarter inch mark on there with a pencil draw my quarter inch mark line like so get one of my squares plump that right in the middle there because I was a say I will explain next week why I'm doing this this way you will see. You don't have to do that with hexagons. Trust me, it's just these squares and the way I'm going to finish them off later so I get the right size. So put that in there like that. Line it up. Put my pins in. Right, spin that round. That's it. Like so. Hold on. There we are. Gotcha, I think. Yep, gotcha. Right, let's lift that up a bit like that. Right, okay. Then now I will fold over my quarter inch seam and do my tacking and so on. Right then, okay. I think that's going to be it. I don't know how long this is the video is going to be, but as I say, I hope it has helped someone. Even if it helps one person, it is you know all all in, <laughs> you know it's my achievement really. But this is the way I do it. Okay, I know there is different techniques in different ways out there, but this is definitely how I do my English paper piece pieces. So I do this technique on all the different shapes that I've got. Um, if as I say, there is going to be more uh tutorials coming up and i have got a lovely list from you guys which is absolutely amazing um of things that i can do every friday so but i am going to do 
um, English paper piece in there probably again next week to show you the finished square and also um, I'll see if I've got time to do well hopefully I will have time uh, to do like a, a diamond shape a hexagon shape just so you can see them how they've been tacked together okay so when the way that they're actually put together as well okay then right so I am going to love you and leave you all <laughs> And I will be back on Monday as always. And uh, yeah, I've got a, a half finish and I have a whole finish. <laughs> so, and I've got progress on my other things as well. All right then. So as always, please take care, stay safe and happy crafting. Bye.